Welcome back to the NPTEL course on quantum computing basics. Uh, thus far, you have learned about quantum states, both mathematically and drawing on ideas from quantum mechanics. In this last module of this week's lecture series, you will learn how to perform operations on quantum states. Here is an outline of uh, this module. Uh, quantum uh, computation is built on certain building blocks called gates. And first, we will talk about uh, single qubit gates. Uh, that is how to manipulate single qubits. Uh, we will discuss uh, quantum circuits using single qubit gates. Uh, then we will move on from single qubit gates to multiple qubit gates or what are called multiparticle states. And we will uh, sh see how to build uh, gates that can uh, operate on multiple qubit states and build more complex circuits uh, using those gates. Before we discuss quantum gates, let's do a quick recap of what you learned earlier this week. Uh, you learned that in classical computing, we have deterministic bits as opposed to uh, qubits in quantum computing, which are probabilistic. Uh, you learned that quantum computing is built on linear algebra as opposed to the Boolean algebra that classical computing is built on. And finally, uh, uh, you learned that uh, quantum computing is built on quantum gates as opposed to logic gates of classical computing. And it's the last uh, row in this table that we are going to be discussing in depth today. Uh, a single qubit Q, uh, also uh, represented as a ket in Dirac notation, is of the form alpha 0 plus beta 1, as you can see here, and it's also represented by a uh, two row single column matrix. Uh, this ket is a linear combination of the basis states 0 and 1, which are orthonormal. And uh, alpha and beta, which are complex numbers, are referred to as the probability amplitudes of uh, this qubit. The bra, which is an operator, is the con conjugate transpose of a qubit, and it is a row matrix as opposed to the ket, which is a column matrix. The bra ket is the bra operator applied to a ket, and that produces a scalar or a complex number, and this is also called the inner product, just like the vector dot product. The ket bra is the transformation of uh, one operator into another. It transforms uh, a bra into a, uh, a linear transformation operator or a matrix uh, using uh, the outer product. And uh, as you can see, the notation for the ket bra is the reverse of the bracket. You also learned that uh, every qubit, uh, when it's observed or when it is measured, probabilistically collapses to either of its basis states, 0 or 1. And we learned that the probabilities are definite. Probability of Q collapsing to zero is the square of the modulus of associated probability amplitude alpha. And probability of collapsing to one is uh, the modulus of beta square. And uh, because the qubit can only collapse to either the zero or the one, the sum of those probabilities must add to one. Uh, we learned how to uh, represent a qubit or visualize a qubit on the block sphere and uh, we learned that a qubit can be represented in general terms using uh, two angles, uh, theta, which is the angle between the uh, qubit uh, uh, vector and the uh, z-axis, and using phi, which is the relative phase uh, of the of the uh, qubit, and that's the angle between the qubit uh, and uh, the x-axis. Or in other words, you can also think of it as uh, the qubit's rotation around the z-axis. All right, now diving into single qubit gates. Uh, a single qubit gate is the most elementary computation uh, you can see in uh, any quantum computing system. And its purpose is to change the state of a qubit. So take a qubit Q, and we apply a gate A, and it produces another qubit Q dash. In mathematical terms, this is nothing but a linear transformation of a vector. So Q is a vector or a ket, Q dash is the vector or a ket as well. So A is a matrix. And the operation that converts Q to Q dash is a matrix multiplication. And we can describe in general terms uh, any such gate A using a 2 by 2 matrix that you see here, each element being a complex number. We can also describe this uh, or represent this matrix in direct form. As you can see, this is a uh, simply a sum of several uh, Outer products. Uh, take this for example. This is uh, an outer product 0, 1, so ket 0 followed by bra 1. And when we take the ket and we multiply it by the bra in matrix forms, 
we get a 2 by 2 matrix. So uh, if you do the math and uh, if you uh, synthesize the matrices uh, from all of these different outer product terms, you'll find that you get this matrix. So in matrix terms or in Dirac, ter Dirac terms, we can uh, write the gate expression as Q dash equals A times Q. Uh, and in matrix multiplication terms, if Q is represented by uh, if uh, alpha beta, that is alpha and beta are its probability amplitudes, and let's say Q dash's probability amplitudes are alpha dash and beta dash, then we'll get Q dash by applying this matrix or multiplying this matrix by uh, the matrix that uh, rep uh, represents uh, our liquid Q. Uh, the matrix A is a unitary matrix. And you've learned about unitary matrix a bit uh, in earlier modules. Uh, a unitary matrix is one uh, uh, for which its uh, conjugate transpose, that is A dagger, also happens to be its inverse. And uh, uh, you learn uh, this is a fundamental property of uh, quantum mechanics as well, uh, and it also translates to quantum computing that every gate must be uh, unitary. Let's look at some example of single qubit gates. We start with what are called the poly XYZ gates. The poly X gate uh, represented using simply an X or using a sigma X in uh, mathematical terms can be represented by this particular matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. And this is equivalent to uh, this Dirac expression of as a sum of two outer products. Uh, let's take an example from the block view. Let's take first the our ket 0. Now let's apply our sigma x gate to get 0. And in the block view, you see this has flipped. Uh, applying the sigma x gate has uh, transformed the get 0 to get 1. Let's do the multiplication here. We take sigma x, which is this matrix. We take uh, get 0, which is this matrix. And if you do the multiplication, you see you get 0, 1, which is nothing but 1. Okay. Now, what happens if we apply our sigma x? Uh, gate to the get 1. In the block sphere, you, you can see this flip back to 0. In Dirac notation, uh, if we take this Dirac expression here, uh, uh, sum of two outer products, 0, 1, plus 1, 0, and we apply it to the get 1. Because uh, these are all linear transformation operators, we can distribute this uh, get 1 inside. What we get is, we get get 0, and then we can uh, uh, apply this bra on this get, so you get bra 1 1 plus 1 and bra 0 1. So bra 1 1 as you know must be 1 because they are uh, uh, identical vectors, bra 0 and 1 because they are orthonormal vectors, this term is going to cancel out. So you end up with simply 0. So our uh, poly x gate or our sigma x gate transforms 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. And if you take any general qubit Q, it's going to simply flip the probability amplitudes. So if alpha was associated with 0 and beta with 1, now you see beta associated with 0 and alpha associated with 1. Uh, and you, if you if you replace 1, 0 with alpha and beta, you'll find that the output will be beta alpha. So if you do the math, you'll find, uh, you can verify that. So in visual terms, and what we see in the box here, is that the poly x gate ends up uh, rotating uh, any of our uh, vectors uh, or our gets around the x-axis by pi degrees or 180 degrees. Uh, in other words, you can also describe it as a bit flip. That is, uh, if we uh, take the analogy with the classical computing, we have uh, our orthonormal basis states 0 and 1, roughly analogous to the classical 0 and 1 bits, 0 flips to 1 and 1 flips to 0. So there are several ways of uh, looking at this transformation. Uh, the poly z gate is uh, performs something uh, related. So this is the matrix and this is the direct form of uh, the poly z gate. Let's see what it does. The poly z gate transforms our plus state, which is uh, lies at one end of the x-axis, to the minus gate, which lies at the other end of the x-axis, and vice versa. It transforms the minus state to the plus state. And on the block sphere, the poly z gate is going to uh, do a phase flip. That is, uh, uh, if you think about the relative phase 
of any qubit that is the angle by which the qubit is rotated around the z axis now if you take any qubit and apply the z gate it ends up rotating that qubit around the z axis by pi degrees or 180 degrees i'm sorry pi radian or 180 degrees so uh, the poly y gate is a uh, uh, again following from the poly x and poly z gate uh, can be represented by a matrix uh, denoted as uh, uh, denoted by sigma y and now this has uh, imaginary terms as you can see here it has an i and if you do the math uh, you'll find that this uh, can be represented as a function of the sigma x and sigma z gates and it can be represented as i times sigma x times sigma z and this sigma x times sigma z is simply uh, a matrix multiplication so when you multiply two two by two matrices, you get another two by two matrix, and you just have to apply an i, and you get sigma y. So as you may uh, infer by looking at this term, our sigma y gate does the operations of both the x and the z gates. So visually, it's going to do uh, it's going to rotate uh, any qubit around the y axis by pi or 180 degrees, and it ends up flipping both the bit and the face. Finally, uh, our poly x, y and z gates are some of the most uh, basic uh, gates and uh, collectively they are also quite powerful. Uh, for each of these, uh, if you do the matrix multiplication, you will find that the, uh, uh, if you square e each of them, that is sigma x square, you get the uh, 2 by 2 identity matrix. Similarly, if you uh, uh, multiply sigma z by sigma z, you get the identity matrix and so on. Uh, and any combination of these uh, poly uh, gates, that is x, y, and z, if you take x and z, x, uh, y and z, and so on, uh, some combination of these gates can be used to create any possible 2 by 2 matrix. Or in other words, on the block sphere, you can use, if you want to transform uh, or if you want to rotate any single qubit around the block sphere, you can use some combination of these x, y, and z gates. Uh, let's look at a couple more examples. And this is one of the most foundational gates that uh, you'll be using in all of quantum computing, the Hadamard gate. What does the Hadamard gate do? Uh, first, let's look at the matrix representation. It's uh, represented usually by H. And here is the matrix as well as the Dirac uh, form of the, of the gate. So let's first begin with our get zero, the block sphere. And if you see the block sphere, you'll see that the Applying a Hadamard gate to get zero made it uh, moved it from the z axis to the x axis, right? So let's look at the matrix multiplication here. We take this matrix and we apply it to the get zero, which is one zero. And if you do the multiplication, you'll find that we get the matrix one divided by root two, one one. And this can be represented in uh, 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 as in this particular form as uh, 1, 1 is nothing but 0 plus 1. And if you remember from our earlier lecture, this is nothing but the plus gate. Now, if we apply the Hadamard gate to, to this state or the plus gate, as you can see on the block sphere, it went back to its original state of uh, 0. So let's uh, look at this. So we apply the Hadamard matrix to this particular state. And if you do the multiplication, you'll find you get back 1, 0, which is nothing but 0. So our Hadamard gate is very important in that it allows us to change a qubit uh, from the x to the z basis and the z back to the x basis. This is a very important transformation and it is quite crucial to uh, uh, how we can do quantum computing uh, and uh, uh, compute on very large uh, exponential size uh, states. Uh, there's another gate, S gate, uh, which is the last example of single qubit gate we will see in this module. And this is the matrix. And let's see what it does on the block sphere. Okay. So originally we were in the plus state. And now when you apply the S gate, it transforms it into the plus I state. That is from uh, the one extremity of the X axis to one extremity of the Y axis. Similarly, we start with the minus state, the S gate will transform it into 
a minus i state. Visually, what is this doing? Note that we had originally we had a vector here, it moved here, then when you started with a vector here, it moved here. So what it did, because any rotation here on the xy plane is nothing but our relative phase for any qubit. So the s gate ends up adding pi by 2 to the relative phase of any qubit. So that's the purpose of uh, using an s gate. So these two gates are quite important because there are a lot of operations where we will need to convert uh, a qubit to uh, um, from a, uh, a definite or a, or a basis state to a superposition state or we will need to add uh, to the phase of uh, any qubit. Moving from quantum gates to quantum circuits, a quantum circuit is nothing but a sequence of building blocks or quantum gates. And each gate carries out an elementary computation as we just saw. A circuit is supposed to carry out more complex computation, building on the gates that it is composed of. So take this as an example. You have uh, an input Q, uh, which is a qubit. And uh, in the circuit, we apply uh, a poly X gate and a Hadamard gate in sequence. What is this uh, synthesized to? The net effect of this, uh, of applying an X and an H gate, is can be synthesized into a another uh, gate. And that gate is nothing but the matrix multiplication of these two gates. But it's going to be applied in reverse order because if you uh, see that the time goes from left to right and first the uh, sigma x gate is applied to the vector q and the out, to the output of that we apply the Hadamard gate. Therefore, the net transformation that happens is going to be h multiplied by sigma x and that's what you see here. And uh, so any gates that we have in sequence uh, to find out what the net transformation is, all we have to do is do a matrix multiplication of the gates uh, in that sequence. So in the case of uh, uh, h times sigma x, this is the final matrix or the, we get or the final linear transformation. And note that uh, any any such uh, combination of gates is also going to produce a unitary matrix, just like any single gate does. When we apply this particular circuit to get zero, if you do the math, you'll figure out that uh, the uh, state zero is going to be transformed to the state minus, whereas the state one is going to be transformed to the state plus. Another example of a circuit, we apply a Hadamard and an S gate in sequence. So the matrix is going to be, again, multiplication in the reverse order, S times H. And this uh, circuit ends up uh, transforming a 0 to a plus i and a 1 to a minus i. And uh, visually speaking, or if you look at the block sphere, this ends up uh, uh, switching the our qubit uh, between the y and the z basis. So let's look at the quantum circuit in more general terms. So quantum circuit is, uh, the purpose of using quantum circuit is to do some useful computation from a given input and then measure the results so we can get something uh, interesting out of it. So, uh, as an example, look at this particular circuit and note that the timeline goes from left to right. So, operations happen in this uh, direction. First, we have an input qubit Q. We perform some kind of computation. This the X and NH are just an example. You can have any sequence of gates here. And as a result of the computation, we get a different qubit. So, Q changes into Q dash. In this case, uh, in this example, it will just be H sigma X uh, multiplied by Q and that's what uh, we'll get. Now finally, as you know, uh, a qubit, when we observe its state, it tends to collapse to either of its basic states. So that's what this is actually showing you. Uh, the You can see here, the uh, this line C at the bottom, this denotes what the measured state of a qubit is going to be. And we know that uh, for this qubit Q dash, if we represent it as alpha dash 0 plus beta dash 1, it's going to collapse to 0 with the probability mod alpha dash square and to 1 with probability mod beta dash square. And these, this symbol simply denotes that after we perform a computation on uh, a qubit uh, via certain sequence of gates, we measure that uh, the state of the final superposition state. And that's what we get on C. And what we end up observing uh, in any quantum, in any real quantum computation system 
is this measured value C. So we'll see what more to do about uh, quantum uh, circuits and measurements uh, towards the end of this uh, module. And you'll also see how uh, uh, we can uh, perform useful computations and measurements in subsequent lectures. But before we go that, we need to uh, scale up our uh, thinking about quantum states a little bit. Thus far, we only talked about single qubit states. Now we should talk about multiple qubit states because a single qubit state only gives us so much. It it has it it tells us whether a qubit can be either in the state zero or the state one. It's uh, it's not uh, very useful in any real system. So to scale up our state space, what we need to do is we need to combine multiple single qubits and thereby give us a multi-state system. And as it turns out, with n qubits, we can represent not just n states, we can actually represent 2 to the power n states. That is a uh, an exponential uh, in the size of the number of qubits uh, that, we are, uh, that we get as in. So let's first look at a 2 qubit state and see how this can be achieved. And uh, the a multipartite state composed of 2 qubits, q1 and q2, can be represented this way and this symbol here denotes a tensor product and if we do a tensor product of our uh, single qubit states q1 and q2 let's say uh, these are the representations the tensor product ends up producing uh, 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 an, uh, a 4 by 1 matrix here so this is also referred to as a bipartite state uh, because it begins with two qubits and uh, this contains uh, this particular matrix contains uh, all possible states uh, this two qubit set can lie in. Let's take an example here to make this clear. Uh, if we take the uh, bipartite state 0, 1, which means we must do its tensor product, and 0 is can be represented by this matrix, 1 by this matrix, and uh, if you do the matrix multiplication, if or if you do the sorry, the tensor product, then this is what you end up getting. So if you notice here, uh, in each row, we uh, are going to be multiplying uh, uh, each uh, each pair of elements uh, across these different states. So you have Q11 multiplied by Q21. Next row is Q11 multiplied by Q22. Q21, uh, Q12 multiplied by Q21, and Q12 multiplied by Q22. So if you uh, do the corresponding multiplications here, this is how to be get. Now in direct notation. This can be represented uh, in short form. So, because uh, it's rather challenging to do a tensor product of uh, multiple states all the time, especially if we go beyond two qubits, as you will see, uh, we can represent this state in short simply as this: cat zero, cat one can be represented as state zero one. And what exactly does uh, a two qub uh, two qubit state give us? It gives us four possible states. So we have states q one, q two. So it can actually take the form either 0, 0, or 0, 1, or 1, 0, or 1, 1. So uh, for a single qubit, remember that uh, it could collapse to either the 0 or the 1 state. In our two qubit states, now individually each qubit can collapse to either 0 or the 1. But if we take them together, there are four possible combinations. So now we have scaled it up. You see, two. Uh, this is uh, 2 squared. And this particular state that we get by uh, doing the tensor product of the two single qubits ends up uh, being represented in direct terms in this form that you see below. It's uh, q1, uh, 1, q2, 1 and uh, applied to the state 0, 0 and so on. Okay, So you have four terms here as opposed to the two terms we had in the in a single qubit uh, system. And the probability of our two qubit state collapsing to 0, 0 is nothing but the modulus of q11, q21 squared and so on. So now you see we have four states and we also have four probability amplitudes. Hope that is clear. Going from two to n qubit states, uh, an n qubit state is just a uh, an extrapolation of the two qubit states. We're going to be uh, doing a tensor product of n qubits applied in sequence. And if you do the uh, tensor product, remember that if you multiply two two by one, uh, if you do a tensor product of two two by one matrices, you end up with a four by one matrix. Then if you take the next term, 4 by 1 matrix, tensor product with the 2 by 1 matrix will give you an 8 by 1 matrix. So you can see uh, the, at, at every uh, after every tensor product, you get double the number of rows in your matrix. But finally, what we end up with is for an n qubit states, we're going to end up with uh, 
a single column matrix with 2 to the power n rows. So n qubits have actually produced a state with 2 to the power n numbers. So two, we need 2 to the power n data items to describe that state. That's why that's how we get uh, an exponential size uh, increase in state space. And like we represented our uh, uh, 2 qubit state by uh, 0, 0 within the get brackets, for an n state, we can represent it in this form. It's a sequence of zeros within the get brackets, and it's the tensor product form is, as you can see here. We do the uh, matrix or the uh, the tensor um, uh, multiplication, and what we get is uh, the matrix uh, with uh, the first row one followed by two to the power n minus one zeros in all the subsequent rows. In direct notation, this can be represented in a short form using this exponential notation. We can have a get zero, and this is uh, the tensor product symbol followed by n. And our two to the power n dimensional uh, or n row matrix uh, can uh, uh, also gives us our general representation of an n qubit state. As you can see, if you take the elements from each row here, they will be associated with uh, one combination of uh, uh, each of these states. So, uh, we, uh, at the extremes, we'll get uh, a qubit with all zeros, and here we get a qubit with all ones. And the middle, we're going to have uh, different uh, com combinations, different numbers of zeros and ones in different positions. And the number of possible states we can have is 2 to the power n, and we're going to have correspondingly 2 to the power n probability amplitudes, because our n qubit states can collapse to any one of those two to the power n states. All right. So how can we classify uh, multi-qubit states? It turns out there's a simple binary classification. So some states can be expressed as the tensor product of two states, as you've already seen, and we call them product states. So the state 0, 1 is, can be represented as the tensor product 0 uh, times 1. And if we take uh, this state as an example, and if you do the multiplication, or rather if you multiply these two uh, qubits uh, uh, or uh, these two quantum states uh, using the tensor product, you'll find that you get this particular state. So uh, this bipartite state, it turns out, can be expressed as the tensor product of these two bipartite states. In this case, this is uh, these are both plus states. So you have a plus state tensor product with a plus state produces the state that you see here. Now it turns out that not all of our bipartite states that we can have can be expressed as a tensor product of uh, two states. And we call such states as entangled states. And one example of this is what you see here. So uh, remember that for a bipartite state, uh, we have probability amplitudes associated with the four different combinations of zeros and ones. You can have a 0, 0, or a 1, 1, or a 0, 1, or a 1, 0. But those two terms here you can see have the coefficient 0. Now, this is the normalized state, as you can see, because the probabilities add to 1. Half, you do the square of this, so half plus half is 1. But you cannot uh, find any pair of uh, uh, single qubit states, like like these, which, if you do a tensor product with them, will give you the state. So, these are special states or entangled states, and we will learn more about them in the uh, first lecture of next week's uh, lessons. With the block sphere, we can visualize a single qubit or a single quantum state, but it's not a powerful enough tool to visualize a multipartite state. For that, we use a Q-sphere, which you'll also see more of when uh, you learn Qiskit programming in uh, later lectures. Uh, here is an example of a Q-sphere that can be used to represent a two-qubit state. What we have uh, visually for representation are both the poles as well as the equators. So at the poles, what we can do is we can represent the states 0, 0, and at the south pole, which is not shown here, we can represent states 0, 1. So the qubit that we are showing here, the two state system, represents our state 0, 0. And that's why you see a single line from the center of the sphere up to the north pole. Uh, the states uh, 0, 1 and 1, 0 can be marked on this particular equator. Okay, so keep, the, keep that in mind. That's the uh, typical representation we'll use for any Q sphere of. Uh, to represent an n state qubit. Uh, to represent a general n state qubit, uh, the rule of thumb is that the north pole uh, will uh, represent the state uh, that is the tensor product of the qubit with all of, of the 
individual qubits, all of them being in the zero state. And the south pole represents the uh, state that is the tensor product of all of the qubits being in the one state. So this, if you represent in the long form Dirac term, this will be zero uh, n times, and this will be one n times. Okay. So in the case of a two qubit state, uh, the zero zero state is represented by a dot here, and the one one state will be represented by a dot here. And to call out what state we want to represent, we're just going to be marking uh, that dot with a small sphere as you see here. What does the color indicate? The color indicates the relative phase. So here uh, we uh, we want to represent the state zero zero, and that is uh, denoted by the brown color as you see here. As the phase changes. And uh, if you want to represent us, our state of uh, with different phases, then we will use the appropriate color uh, to represent that. Uh, three qubit state, because we need to represent uh, uh, any one of eight states uh, or uh, some linear combination of eight possible states from 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, we need not just a north pole and south pole, but also two uh, latitudes. So you have the state 0, 0, 0 that can be represented here. And 111 will be at the south pole. Uh, here you'll have all the states with two zeros. Here you have all the states with two ones. And the state that is uh, that this particular Q-sphere represents is simply the 0, 0, 0 state. Now take this Q-sphere uh, as another example. Okay, so it's a more complicated example, and it represents a three-qubit state. And this represents, uh, as you'll see, the state that is called out here. Okay. Uh, so as a three-qubit state. Uh, our three qubits can take uh, any of these particular forms, right? From 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1 with all other combinations of zeros and ones uh, that you see here. And the probability amplitudes for each are 1 over 2 root 2, which means if you uh, do the square of probability amplitudes and sum them all, you get 1 by 8 times 8, and that adds up to 1. How do you represent this? Now, state 0, 0, 0 with a probability amplitude 1 by 2 root 2 is denoted by this sphere. The state 1, 1, 1 with the probability amplitude 1 by 2 root 2 uh, lies here. We take state 0, 0, 1 again with the probability amplitude 1 by 2 root 2. You can think of it as lying on this latitude 0 uh, and we take another state with two zeros and uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. That can be represented here. We take the states 0, 1, uh, uh, 0 that can lie here. And similarly, on this latitude, we can represent the different uh, Qubits, uh, qubit states that have two ones and one zero. So one zero one, zero one one, and one one zero. And the way to represent this is by simply drawing a line from the center of the sphere to all of the different uh, endpoints representing our different uh, state possibilities. Uh, now take another example of a two qubit state. You see, we here we have not just uh, uh, one uh, circle denoting a particular state like we had either in this Q-sphere or on this Q-sphere, but we have uh, a line called, uh, uh, going from the center to the North Pole and South Pole. So this state uh, can be re is a representation of this particular uh, two-qubit state, 1 by root 2, 0, 0 plus 1, 1. So uh, our two-qubit system can uh, take one of any four possibilities, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 0, and 1, 0. But 0, 1, and 1, 0 lie on the equator and they are not called out, which means that the probability of their occurring is 0. And instead, we have the probability of either of these two states being uh, half, and that's why the probability amplitude is 1 by root. Now, the size of this particular sphere that we use, that represents the relative weight associated with a particular state, or in other words, the probability amplitudes. So, uh, if, uh, for example, uh, this particular state had a higher probability amplitude than this, then we would use a, a sphere of larger radius here compared to the sphere that we use at the south pole. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, let's say we want to uh, represent this similar state, but with a different phase applied to uh, one of our qubits. Okay, so consider the state. If we say we want to apply, uh, we have the sign minus associated with our 0, 0 state instead of the plus state. That means that our 0, 0 state has been phase shifted by pi. And note that the color at pi in uh, in our key here is uh, approximately a, is like a greenish blue, and this denotes our phase shift. So this state would be uh, one over root two minus zero zero plus one. And you'll learn more about Q spheres and how uh, to represent uh, Q spheres from any state you generate in a 
quantum circuit in uh, later lectures. Okay.